Hello, sunshines. So foundation is probably the makeup basic that tends to throw us a curveball the most often. So today I want to talk about the five most common foundation woes that I would hear as a makeup artist and how to fix them. The first one is cakey foundation. Now the issue with this will vary from formula to formula and thicker, fuller coverage of formulas you have to be a bit more careful with. The biggest key here is to start sheer with your application and work your way from the center outwards a little bit at a time because that way you're only going to use as much foundation as you need and it's so much easier to add a little bit more than to try and smooth out too thick foundation. However, if you have goofed up and added way too much product to your face, just dab it with a damp beauty blender and this is gonna pick up any excess product and smooth out the texture. And if it's cakey from wear and tear throughout the day, all you have to do is mist a little setting spray or a hydrating facial mist and then use your makeup sponge to smooth that out. It'll rehydrate and make your foundation more mobile again so that way you can smooth out any of the creases. All right, number two is huge. It is one of the main ones and I'm talking about foundation rolling, pilling, rolling off your face. This happens for several different reasons and that's probably why it can be so frustrating for people that tend to have this issue. It could be as simple as you're applying too much moisturizer, serum, something before your foundation or that you're not giving it enough time to kind of dry or settle before you apply the next layer. One of the best ways to fix this is to give about five minutes in between steps. And if this sounds way too time consuming, just think multitasking. So put your serum on, then brush your teeth, then put your moisturizer on, then maybe go drink a cup of coffee and so on and so forth. Using less product and less heavier creams and serums can really help this as well. Now, at the end of the day, the root of this problem is that your products aren't absorbing into the skin properly. And so one of the ways that you can fix that is to exfoliate on a regular basis. And I recommend using a chemical exfoliator, especially this time of year, because it's not as harsh on your face. Now I am a big fan of products that contain glycolic acid because it helps to keep my skin clear in addition to exfoliating. Now I've been using the Exuviance Triple Microdermabrasion Facial Polish about once a week. And even though this does have a physical exfoliant component to it, it's not something that you scrub really harsh with. The crystals in it are pretty uniform, so they're not going to cause any damage to your face, and you just want to lightly massage it in and let the glycolic acid do most of the work. This is actually really similar to Kate Somerville's Exfolicate, which is also an amazing, amazing exfoliator. I recommend them both, but I'll admit that neither of them are cheap. So if you guys wanna see me do a drugstore skincare recommendations routine kind of video, just let me know and I will plan that out for you. Okay, so the last reason that your foundation might be pilling is that the ingredients in your products might just not be very friendly with each other. Mixing a silicone-based primer and a water-based foundation, for example, are usually not gonna work very well. They're gonna wind up clashing and rolling off of each other, and that's when you get the peeling, pilling, the rolling, the balling, the disaster. Some other often guilty ingredients for this are talc, iron oxide, and mica. So if all else fails, look at your ingredients list and try switching out some of the products that have those ingredients for some other things to see if that does not solve the problem. Number three is foundation lines. We've all been guilty of it at one time or another. Your makeup looks amazing in the bathroom and then as soon as you take a peek in that car mirror, you see it. A big, obvious line right down your jaw. Unfortunately, the best trick for this is not a magical trick. It's just taking a couple of extra minutes to make sure that you've blended your makeup along your jawline really, really well. And to make sure that you pick a good foundation that matches your neck. Do not try to match your foundation to your hand, your arm, or 
preferably even the outer perimeter of your face. It's all going to be darker or a slightly different color than your jawline and your neck. And since we want to stop our foundation application about here, this is what you want it to match because your face is gonna be covered with the foundation. So match it to your neck if you want a seamless application and to not walk out of the house with that weird, my face is darker than my body thing. You've done it. I've done it. Don't apologize. Just do better next time. That's all we can do. All right, four is another one that causes a ton of people issues. This is probably my other major one that I always, always, always got asked. Why is my foundation turning orange and what do I do about it? It's called oxidation. It is a giant pain in the butt and it mostly happens to people that have oily skin types. And it's basically the result of the chemicals and ingredients in your makeup mixing with the oil in your skin and doing weird things. Sometimes it turns orange, sometimes it just turns too dark or even a gray shade. It can make your makeup look really cakey. Uh, it does a lot of weird stuff, but you can avoid it. So you always wanna start out by washing your face in lukewarm water and doing your whole skincare routine before you apply your foundation. So that way you're always starting with a clean slate and there's not a base of oil already on the skin before you apply your makeup. Using a mattifying primer can be a big help because it creates a barrier between your skin and your makeup to keep the oil from oxidizing your foundation. Once you apply your primer, leave it on for a few minutes to let it kind of settle in and then use a blotting sheet to remove any excess oil or product on your skin before applying your foundation. You can also blot a little bit afterwards so that way you don't have a ton of excess product on your skin. Then you're going to want to set your foundation with a translucent powder to absorb any excess oil. Now, mixing sunscreen with your foundation is a recipe for disaster. It usually makes things worse, but that's not an excuse to go without SPF. You could try a primer with a built-in sunscreen. That should usually fix the problem. Or there are a ton of powder sunscreens, and even some setting sprays that you can apply on top of your makeup at the very end. And the benefit of those is that you can reapply as recommended without disturbing your makeup. So even better. And don't forget when you're buying a new foundation, always wait at least 15 minutes when trying it on and color matching to see if it changes colors and try and look at it in a few different sources of light. If it oxidizes when you're color matching, it just may not be the right foundation for you. You might wanna try another formula. So as far as what to do if your foundation has already oxidized and you don't have time to completely redo your makeup, just mist a little hydrating spray on your face and use a damp sponge to blend out the makeup. You can shear out the areas where it's looking a little bit more orange and then just reapply with a little bit of translucent setting powder to keep any more oil from further oxidizing the makeup and making the situation any worse. Okay, number five is also a very common foundation complaint that I heard in my 10 years of working as a makeup artist. Foundation, settling into fine lines and accentuating the texture of them. Now, now, this advice does work for any kind of texture issues, whether it's fine lines or acne scarring, but what you're going to want to do, aside from the options you have with skincare, which is a whole nother video altogether, is use a good silicone-based primer. This is going to smooth out the surface of the face and create a nice, even canvas to apply your makeup on. Then you're going to want to use your foundation very sparingly. Only apply it where needed. It's much easier to add a little bit at a time just in the areas where you need coverage than to try and fix it when you've applied way too much makeup and now it's pulling up in the areas that you did not want to draw attention to. Then you can just use a little light setting powder on a really fluffy brush to set everything and I recommend using an HD powder because this is actually going to blur surface texture versus potentially accentuate it, which some heavier traditional setting powders tend to do. I do this typically because I just have really dry skin and regular setting powders do tend to accentuate any dry texture that I might have on my face. All right, so those are my top five questions I think I got about foundation in all of my years working with the public. And they're a big pain in the butt, but they're easy to fix. So let me know if this video was helpful for you. Feel free to like it if it was. And let me know 
what are your big makeup woes, complaints, pain in the butt issues that just seem to reoccur and you have a hard time coming up with a fix for it. If this is your first time here, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so that way you don't miss any of the videos coming out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And feel free to share if you know of anybody that could use a little sunshine in their day.